Greetings and thank you for worshiping with us. It's good to have you with us. Let's sing together. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, His power is displayed. I hold my shepherd will defend me through the deepest valley he will lead oh the night has been won and I shall overcome yet not I but through Christ in me Sure, sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon, and he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. Oh, the chains are released. I can sing. I am free, yet not I, but through Christ. said that he will bring me home and day by day I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne do this I hold my hope is only Jesus all the Is 
complete till my lips shall repeat yet not I but through Christ in me when the race is complete still my lips shall repeat yet not I but through Christ in me yet not I but through Christ in me yet not I but through Christ in me Amen Let's continue to sing Amazing Grace My Chains Are Gone
Well, I hope you've enjoyed the worship so far. At this time, I'd like to share a few announcements and a few thank yous with you. First, I'd like to thank all those who helped feed the hungry in our community this past Monday. Thanks to all those who helped with the soup kitchen. And for those of you who have helped create this new way to distribute the food in a safe way during this pandemic, thank you. Second, I'd like to remind you that today is Crop Walk Sunday. And for all those participating in the walk to relieve hunger in our community and around the world, I want to say thank you. This year we've had to change things up a little bit and we've asked you to walk alone or to walk with family members. But thank you for walking and raising money to alleviate hunger. If you'd like to donate to the Crop Walk, you can do so by going to www.crophungerwalk.org donate. I'd also like to invite you to join Will Flaherty, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, in his daily online video Bible study. You can do this by going to Facebook, looking up the St. Joe First UMC Facebook page and clicking on the link there. Or you can go to our church website, sjfirstumc.org, and click on the link there as well. You may also want to join one of our other online Bible studies in small groups. You may want to consider joining the Wednesday Women's Bible Study or the Young Adult Group or the Saturday Men's Breakfast and Bible Study or Bill Funk Sunday School Class. All these groups are meeting online now and you can join them by talking to, one of the, to the small group leader or calling the church at 269-983-3929 and we'll get you the link that you need to join the group that you'd like to join. Finally, back in April, you received a letter letting you know about this new sermon series, the Leap of Faith series. And in that letter, I talked about how I hoped that we could get back together on June 7th and just have one service and then have a catered meal to thank you for your faithfulness to Jesus Christ and to this, to this local church. With them extending the stay-at-home orders here in Michigan and a lot of people's fear with this whole pandemic, uh, we are um, holding off the catered meal. So there will be no catered meal on June 7th. We will hope to, do, to reschedule that later on in the year. And when we do reopen, we will have two services, and we will ask you to uh, wash your hands or sanitize your hands as you come in to wear a ma- and to be wearing a mask. If you don't have a mask, one will be provided for you. And we'll encourage social distancing in the worship services, and then we'll ask everyone to wear a mask uh, while we're worshiping, at least for a while. Um, but we are already talking and discussing uh, ways to reopen the church and how to do that safely. And I just wanted you to be aware of that. At this time, let us take a moment, let us bow our heads, and let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your power, your love, your grace, your truth, your wisdom, and your knowledge. God, we thank you for the beautiful world you gave us. As spring is coming into Michigan here and we see the flowers blooming and the trees blossoming and and just the beauty of the earth, we thank you. We stroll down by the lake and we see the, the beautiful Lake Michigan. Just how beautiful it is, Lord, and how glorious and splendid it is, and we thank you. Thank you, God, for creating a beautiful world with so many wonderful human beings and animals and birds and plants and and different terrains like mountains and hills and lakes and forests. Thank you, God, for this beautiful world. Help us, Lord, to be good stewards of it and to take good care of it. And Lord, we not only thank you for this world, but we thank you for our, our lives. Thank you for creating us and thank you for giving us families that love us and care about us. Be with the families, Lord, all around this community and all over this world. Keep them safe during this pandemic. Keep them close to you and close to each other. May each day that they receive from you be a gift and may they love and cherish that gift and and unwrap it and enjoy each day with you and with their family and with their friends. And Lord, we thank you for your love and we thank you for loving us even when we didn't love you. And we thank you for always looking out for us and and providing for us and caring for us and 
eventually for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to this world to teach us the ways of God and to show us a better way to live. For all of that, we say thank you. And God, we live in this fallen, broken, messed up world and there's a lot of people out there hurting, a lot of people that are in need, a lot of people that have been marginalized and people oppressed. And God, we pray that you would use us Use us as individuals, use us as our families, use us as a church family to reach out to them in love and to do what we can to help. And God, use us. Use us to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to this community and to your world. Use us to help the poor, the needy, the hurting, and the struggling. May they see the love of God and may we take the love of God and the grace and truth and mercy and compassion of God to them. Lord, we love you. I pray that it be evident in our worship of you today and in the way that we live and the way that we treat others and the things that we say and the things that we do. May the love of God be evident in us. And God, I pray that you would forgive us because the love of God doesn't always shine through us and we don't always live up to the standard of your holy word. We fall short of your glory, Lord, and we fall short of your ways and your commands. So I pray right now, God, that you would forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us. Renew us. Revive us so that, and help us to get back up on our feet and to begin to walk the Christian life again when we fall. And Lord, we thank you for your forgiveness and we thank you for your love and your grace. And we thank you for the gift of salvation that you offer to all of us. May those that are listening today know that there's a God out there that loves them, a God out there that died for them, a God out there who wants to forgive them of their sins and adopt them into his family and make them a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. God, thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for adoption into your family. Thank you for the gift of eternal life in heaven with you someday. And we also thank you, Lord, now for the gift of prayer. What a wonderful gift that is to be able to come before the King of kings and the Lord of lords and to lay our burdens down and give our requests and our praises to you. So Jesus, we thank you for teaching your followers how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, today we find ourselves in the fifth week of our Leap of Faith series. In this series, we've been challenging you to take a spiritual leap of faith and to trust God more. So far in this preaching series, we've challenged you to commit to many things that would help you grow in your faith. We've challenged you to pray more and to read your Bible more, to worship more, and to value and seek out Christian fellowship. Then last week, I encouraged you to love God and others more. Today, I'm going to be asking you to commit to discovering and using your gifts and talents for the Lord. You know, the Bible teaches us that once we become a follower of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit blesses us with at least one spiritual gift. For most of us, the Holy Spirit has blessed us with many spiritual gifts. The spiritual gifts listed in Romans 12 are prophesying, serving, teaching, encouraging, giving, leadership, and mercy. The list in 1 Corinthians 12 includes the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, the gift of faith, the gift of healing, the gift of miraculous powers, the gift of distinguishing spirits, the gift of speaking in tongues, and the ability to interpret what is spoken in tongues. And in 1 Peter, Peter mentions the gift of hospitality. I'd encourage you to pause this video and look at that list. Look at the list on the screen and write down the spiritual gifts you think you possess. Now that you have an idea of what spiritual gifts you may possess, I want to encourage you to use those gifts. 
Use those gifts in God's church and in his world. Use these gifts to tell others about Jesus. Use these gifts to share the love, the grace, and wisdom of God with others. Use these gifts to bless other people's lives and to make this world a better place. Besides possessing spiritual gifts, God has also blessed us with many talents. Some of you have great musical talent, while others of you have great acting talents. Still others have great mechanical skills or carpentry skills, while others have wonderful teaching skills and communication skills. Still others are fantastic cooks and bakers, and others have great artistic talents. Still others have great computer skills, and some of you have great farming and gardening skills. And the list of talents can go on and on and on and on. My question to you is this. What talents do you possess? And are you using those talents for the Lord? Are you using those talents to help other people? Let's look at some people in the Bible who used their gifts and talents for the Lord. I want to start out by talking about one person who I think had a gift that he didn't even know he had. Let's look at Moses. Moses was a Hebrew who grew up in the Egyptian palace. He was probably very well educated, but he did not feel he had good communication skills. Yet God called Moses to confront Pharaoh and to help lead the Israelites out of Egypt. When God was talking to Moses in Exodus chapters 3 and 4, we see Moses tell God that he's not eloquent in speech. So God then says he'd send his brother to him, Aaron, and Aaron would be his mouthpiece. But yet what I find interesting is as you continue to read the scriptures, Moses gives some of the, some of the best messages and eloquent speeches and inspirational messages to the people of Israel. I believe God saw a talent in Moses that he didn't even know he had. And God used that talent to inspire, to teach, and to lead the Israelite people. Now let's look at another character in the Bible. Let's look at David. God saw that David had a deep love for the Lord and that he possessed a great fighting and tactical skills. So God had David anointed to be the next king for Saul, after Saul. And then God used David's heart and, God's, and David's fighting skills and tactical skills to help the Israelites take control of much of the promised land. Another person you might be familiar with is Jesus. Jesus probably possessed all of the spiritual gifts and he probably used them all to spread the love of God and truth of God with others. But I know that Jesus possessed the gift of knowledge and the gift of wisdom and the gift of teaching and preaching and healing. And he used these gifts to share God's knowledge and wisdom with others. He used his preaching and teaching skills to bring people to faith in God. And he used his gift of healing to heal many blind, deaf, mute, paralyzed, and sick people. Now let's look at Paul. Paul was a great thinker and philosopher, debater, and theologian. And Paul used those talents to help people to think deeper about God and to help lay down the foundational beliefs of the Christian faith. Now I want to look at one person you may not know about. I want to look at a woman in the Bible whose name is Tabitha. Tabitha shows up in the book of Acts. And I want to read to you Acts 9, verses 36 through 42. It says this. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in the upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, Please come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room 
And all the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Tabitha had made while she was still with them. Peter then sent them out of the room, and then he got down on his knees and prayed. And turning towards the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. And she opened her eyes. And seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. And then Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. You know, most of the time when we read this story, we focus on Peter and how he raised Tabitha back to life. But today I want to focus on Tabitha. Tabitha, she was just an ordinary woman who was good at sewing. And she used that talent to make clothing for the poor and the needy in her town. And when she died, there was such grief. The widows in that area and the poor were were so grieved by her death that they desperately wanted her alive and they sent two men to a nearby town to get Peter to bring him back and, and they begged Peter, do what you can. If you can raise her back to life, do it. And so Peter goes into the room and he prays over and by the power of God, she is raised back to life. What's interesting is the scriptures don't tell us what Tabitha did after she was raised back to life. But you know what? I bet she continued to do what she was always doing, but she did it with more fervor and she probably spent more time doing it. I think she went back and she made even more clothing for the poor and needy and the widows in her town. And she used her gifts and her talents for the Lord. You know, God likes to use ordinary people to do extraordinary things. God wants to use your time, your talents, and your gifts to grow his church and to help other people. You know, my mom, she was a good cook, and she made great homemade pies. And over the years, my mom has made hundreds and hundreds of pies for funeral luncheons, and for other gatherings at the church that required food. That's just one of her talents. And she's offered it for years and years and years to the Lord, and it has blessed hundreds and hundreds of lives in a small way. In our church, I see people using their musical talents to enhance our worship times. I see people with leadership skills leading different commissions and committees in our church. I see people with teaching skills and biblical knowledge leading Bible studies. I see people with the gift of helps helping people in our church and community. I see people who have the gift of encouragement, encouraging people during difficult times and always encouraging people to love the Lord and to remain faithful to Him. I see people with technology skills running our soundboards or running our computers for our slideshow and, or recording the worship services. I see people using their sewing skills and making clothes for children in Haiti. I see people using their knitting skills and making prayer shawls to give to the sick in our community and making hats for those who are undergoing cancer treatment and losing their hair. What I'm trying to get across is this is your talents and your skills and gifts don't have to be some amazing, extraordinary thing. It can be something simple. But when given to the Lord, it can accomplish many great things and touch many lives. People, you only have one life to live here on this earth. Don't waste your time Please figure out your talents and your spiritual gifts and use them for the Lord and use them for the benefit of other people. Today, my challenge to you is to take a leap of faith and commit to discovering your spiritual gifts and your talents. Commit to using them in your church and in your homes and in your community. Use them to grow God's kingdom and to help other people. Let's pray. 
Father God, we thank you for giving us our lives. And we thank you for giving us our talents. Help us, God, to use our God-given talents for you. Help us to use our talents to help other people and to, and to prosper the human flourishing in our homes, in our communities, and all around the world. And God, for those of us who have placed our faith and trust in you and we've been blessed and given the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has given us spiritual gifts, Lord, help us to discover what our spiritual gifts are and to begin to use those spiritual gifts in your church and in our communities to share your love and your truth and your grace with and to help other people. God, use us. Use our time, our talents, and our spiritual gifts for your kingdom and for your glory. We pray this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray you will use your time and talents to serve the Lord and to help other people. Another way we can help others is by giving to worthy causes. The Bible encourages us to be generous with our time and our money. And the scriptures tell us to be cheerful givers. Today I want to encourage you to give to this church that is daily sharing the love and the truth and grace and compassion of God with people in our community and people all over the world. You can give by going to www.sjfirstumc.org and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click on the word donate. I also want to encourage you to give to the Crop Hunger Walks. This group organizes hunger walks in many communities and the monies raised go to help feed the hungry and to care for the needy all over the world. You can donate to this group by going to www.crophungerwalk.org donate. Remember, the Lord has blessed you to be a blessing. So be a blessing to others. And remember this, that God loves a cheerful giver, so let us give with a thankful and joyful and grateful heart today. Amen. Now I'd invite you to enjoy a couple pieces presented by Gary Cooper and enjoy our closing song, Alive, by our praise band. Enjoy the rest of the service and have a blessed week, everyone. Amen. Without love, without love.
I want to thank you for worshiping with us this morning, or it's not actually just this morning for us as we're recording it. It's a beautiful morning. The sun is out. The flowers are blooming. It's a beautiful spring day. It is great to worship and good to have you with us. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I was dead in my transgressions, wandering in sin. I went searching for redemption down a road that had no end. I was walking through the fire. I was living on the run with my flesh lost in desire. I was drowning in the flood. But God, rich in mercy, you came to save me. Now I'm alive. But God, strong and mighty, you reached out for me so I could rise. Now I'm alive. I am far from being perfect. There are days that I regret. On this battlefield I struggle with the lives that I have lived. I have fallen short of glory. I can't make it on my own. If you kept record of my past, I've been sinking like a stone. But God, rich in mercy, me now I'm alive but God strong and mighty you reached out for me so I could rise now I'm breathing in I'm breathing out I was in the grave but God you called me out Yeah. 